What's up, everybody? Welcome to discussion number one. Um, good to see you, Justin, Chrissy, and Antonio, even though I guess we technically won't be in the same classroom, but yay, small group, woo! Well, my name's Sean. Um, welcome to my favorite home office. This is, this is my roof, and it's finally been nice enough and semi-warm enough when the sun's hitting to kind of lay out and read a little bit, so today I have been reading a bunch from our budget and finance book, an exhilarating read, wouldn't you say? But um, I guess as the prompter this week, I had a, a couple questions uh, in mind. The first one, it talked about revenue and expenses throughout the chapters. Well, I guess throughout the chapter two that we mainly had to read this week. But um, I actually never realized, I guess, how many different types of revenue streams and expenditures there were. I mean, I, I guess I kind of knew it, but I didn't know how many different budgets and categories there were to them. So my first part of the question is, um, I know, Justin, you, you work in, in behavioral area, or excuse me, ju judicial at uh, VSU. And Christy, I, I heard you're an English professor, I believe, or teacher. And Antonio, principal of an elementary school. Props to you, my friend. That's intense. But um, I guess with all of it, it comes back to what, what revenue is, um, is collected from y'all's areas. Are, are there certain types that you get more from? And countering that, what expenses um, do your certain sections use? I know, for example, um, I work at the campus rec department and the outdoor department, uh, mainly overseeing the rental center and the challenge course. So I was kind of going through and trying to answer my own question a little bit. So for example, um, some of our expenditures that we have uh, with Core Outdoors is we have a, um, what are they all called? Hold on. Ah, here we go. One of the expenditures is kind of a facility fee that we have to pay. We're in the uh, parking structure that is contracted to another company, and I guess it's technically a um, not a grant, but we have to pay certain amounts every year to pay it off, and part of that is kind of rent for us. So a facility fee is, is definitely one that we pay out, as well as travel. Um, each graduate assistant, we get a certain stipend, as well as professional staff. And a lot of times we try to bring some students by supplementing some of their expenses um, so we can bring them to things like conferences and whatnot. Going along with that, we also do a TRIPS program. So we will take vans and take students um, to different states, different parts of Georgia to do anything from whitewater rafting to rock climbing and everything in between. So travel is another expenditure that we have. Um, as it mentioned in the book, like many areas, uh, salaries are probably one of our most um, large expenditures. Everything from professional salaries um, to graduate assistant salaries and uh, paying for the, the degree. And the biggest one is uh, student staff. We have, I would say in our area alone, at least 30 students that we um, have working as a facilitator on the ropes course, the rock wall or the trips or rental program. So student salary is a big one. And then, of course, program supplies. Um, if we have a tent that gets a big rip in it, we have to get a new one. If uh, we have a piece of gear that's not as safe as we'd like it to be, we have to take care of it and replace it. So um, that doesn't come up so much. We get really good at kind of fixing things um, that we need to in-house, but we definitely, it's some expensive equipment that we need to get originally. Um, and the last big one that I could think of was professional development. We have a multitude of certifications that we get. Um, most recently was our ACCT Level 1 Challenge Course certification where uh, myself and 10 students we ended up getting this and kind of signed a contract that we vowed to work for a certain amount of hours for the school and they took care of the certification. But that was an expense for us. So um, that was definitely one. Now on the flip side, what kind of revenue do we pull in? So our main source of revenue um, is actually probably contract type work. So um, 
on the challenge course, we bring in outside groups. So they'll come in and we'll charge them depending on if they're a student group, if, or excuse me, not a VSU student group, but whether it's a student, a nonprofit, a corporate group, they all kind of different, have fees for the contracts for that, as well as the trips that we do. Um, students, they pay a certain price to go on the trip and they had kind of described contracts in here as the group or person would pay for something and then the school would in fact then do a service. So I believe that trips would fall under the, uh, the contract category as well. Uh, the next one is a, a special student fee. We actually do collect student fees, which I'll talk about in a little bit to fund our program. But um, for instance, when we built our, our challenge course, we had a special student fee for um, a couple semesters. And that was a fee that we pulled in, a one-time thing. And in turn, we actually now um, allow students to come onto our course for free student groups. And that was part of that, the contract of that special student fee. Now, each semester we do pull in a mandatory student fee that's part of kind of the, uh, the campus recreation budget. Uh, they allocate, I believe, $5 from each student to come to Core Outdoors, and that helps su supplement all of the expenses we talked about earlier. So um, what, what do your programs use um, in terms of revenue that's collected as well as expenditures? Um, and they did a really good job, I think, actually, in the chapter kind of breaking down that's really white, but there we go. A uh, breaking down different kind of expenditures and uh, and revenue generation. So definitely take a look at that. It was it was a good read, to be honest. Um, I do have a follow up question, kind of of an overall higher education question. Is what are some trends that we've been seeing not only here at VSU but in higher ed in general in the last few years? It talks about the recession in here and what's happened that. They keep talking about like 2008, 2009. So it's been a few years since. Are we still seeing um, effects of that? I know, for instance, here at VSU, what the big talk of the town seems to come back to is our student enrollments down. And this last year, we had to go through a big thing to budget for, I believe, 6% decrease is what they estimated. I want to say it came out to be five and change, so we budgeted well. But um, the fact that we do have less students, that's less tuition, that's less student fees. And that's less money that um, is coming into VSU. And it's definitely taking an effect, I, I believe. Um, are there any other trends that y'all have been noticing? What are they? And do you think that, um, I wouldn't say an easy fix is in, in to fix it, but um, it, are there things that we can do to, I guess, offset these trends? Also, good trends. Are there any awesome trends that we're like, heck yeah, keep them coming. Um, that's helping us out a lot. So... Once again, I'll, I'll just finish up by reviewing uh, the questions. In your area, what are some revenue? Um, what's revenue that comes in? And what are expenditures that you see often? And the second question is, what are trends that we've been seeing here at VSU as well as in higher education in general when it comes to um, budgeting? So I hope you all have a great day. Go out and enjoy the weather because uh, yesterday was freaking cold. And hopefully that uh, doesn't come back again soon. But enjoy the readings, and I will see you soon.